In this video we're going to discuss a little bit about atrial fibrillation also known as AFib for short. Uh, so what is this um, atrial fibrillation? What is this AFib? Well AFib basically is a cardiac arrhythmia and it's a cardiac arrhythmia that has a very special uh, name or not so much name but a way of describing it and that description is irregularly irregular. Now uh, on uh, hospital rounds I've, I've seen this actually abbreviated II because it's obviously very long to write this out. So what is this? What, what does this mean? You know, we, we really need to understand what this term actually means before we continue talking about atrial fibrillation. So we have atrial fibrillation up at the top. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about this II. What is this all about? Okay, well, before we talk a little bit about it, let me draw the basic component of an EKG. And most of you know what this is. This is just the PQRS, right? Now, this is you know the the beautiful version. This is the way it looked perfectly. But uh, in atrial fibrillation, it doesn't look like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this part right here the QRS complex and I'm gonna show you a couple of diagrams okay so this right here take a look at this these little triangles that they that you see right here these each triangle represents a QRS, QRS complex and if you notice this it's nice and pretty and it's it's regular now when I say regular what do I mean by that well the first part remember it was irregularly irregular so there was two words right when I say it's regular that means that the distance between each QRS complex is the same and if you look over here you'll see that the distances are all the same and it's a little bit bigger up here so so when the distances between each uh, essentially the, the the top of these triangles are the R's right in the in the QRS complex when the distances between them are the same, the word becomes regular. It's the second part, right? Now, what word do I put here in this part? Well, to figure out what goes here, you have to look at the pattern. The pattern in this is the same. It's always the same. So then this is regularly regular. Regularly regular. All right, now let's look at the next one. Now, look at this one here. Well, you th kind of think about it. Is the distance in this one the same between each R? The answer is no. I mean, at the first few, the, it looks like it's the same, but then there's a big one here. So the distances between the R's are not the same. So the word here is going to be irregular. But what's interesting is that there is a common pattern here. There's a common pattern because it looks like if we were to extend this, I mean, the here there's only a, you know it's a kind of a limited uh, strip but if this were extended it probably is something like this I hope you I hope you kind of understand what I'm trying to draw where it seems like every three uh, R complexes after every three R complexes there's a bit of a gap so there's a common pattern because there's a common pattern this is regularly regularly irregular now finally we get to what type of situation you have in atrial fibrillation which is there's no common distance between the QRS complexes so it's irregular and also there's no common pattern between um, anything really there's no pattern there's nothing so it's irregularly irregular so that that's that's basically what that means so now we can go on with uh, talking about atrial fibrillation now that we understand so what's actually happening in atrial fibrillation? What is that, why is the, the EKG strip like this? Well, to, to, to explain it simply, I have a, a diagram I'd like to show you all. It's this one right here. Uh, this diagram. See, the first part here, you'll see this node here, right here, is the SA node. And this is what happens in a normal, normal heart. The SA node sends electricity to this node here, which is the AV node, and then from the atria, which is the top part, 
the electrical signals go down to the ventricles and you can see that outlined. It's beautiful, it's perfect. But now look, this is what's happening in atrial fibrillation. Well, you clearly see here it's all erratic. There's absolutely no synchronization between the atria and the ventricles. The atrial fibrillation is rapid, it's irregular, and this diagram kind of illustrates that. Uh, basically, there's just too many uh, too many impulses coming out. Uh, it, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six. These atria basically are uh, fibrillating. That's where the word comes from, and they're firing at a very irregular and high rate. And um, because there's no correlation really between what's happening in the atria and uh, the ventricles, this uh, EKG will be rapid and it will be irregular. And then, just when you thought I would never show you an EKG, we have one up here. Well, this is your beautiful normal EKG. I mean, it's it's perfect, right? You can see everything. And this is atrial fibrillation. And as, as you can see, just like we described above, the irregularly irregular pattern, it's irregular uh, because the distances between the um, R's are not the same. I mean, they're all over the place. Some are long, some are short. And there's no pattern here. There's no common pattern like there was. Do you see this one here? You remember there was a common pattern? There's no pattern here. So because there's no pattern, it's irregularly irregular. All right, so now we can go into talking about symptoms and diagnosis and treatment. So what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms of uh, atrial fibrillation? Well, um, the sy symptoms of AFib uh, include uh, palpitations. Um, they can they can sometimes uh, include chest pain. Uh, they can make a person feel lightheaded, and um, they can also uh, cause a person to be uh, short of breath, a dyspneic. There's other symptoms too, but these are some of the more common ones. How do you diagnose this? Well, the diagnosis, as most of you probably figured it out by now, you, you do an EKG. And the EKG will, is pretty diagnostic. There's a couple other tests that you would do. One is an echocardiogram. The echocardiogram is important because it can kind of uh, give you uh, a sense of if there's any structural heart defects uh, that may be uh, present uh, in the patient. And then uh, the other things um, that you can test for are, are blood tests, and in particular the thyroid function tests. Uh, because uh, when somebody, many of you may remember, if somebody has hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism, that can actually cause atrial fibrillation. So um, that's actually a very important uh, blood test to do. All right, so how do you treat this? Well, the treatment of atrial fibrillation involves two things. The first thing is rate control. The heart rate of somebody with atrial fibrillation can be very high. It can be anywhere from, well, it could be 150 to maybe 300 beats a minute. So you need to control the rate. And the most common, by far the most common medication to use when you want to control the rate is beta blockers and for example metoprolol. Metoprolol is very commonly used. The second part of the treatment of atrial fibrillation involves um, uh, prevention of uh, thromboembolism. So prevention of thromboembolism. So what does this mean? Well basically what happens in atrial fibrillation is uh, because the uh, uh, the blood is not flowing properly uh, out of the heart, um, it can uh, form uh, emboli, uh, thrombus that eventually uh, move and become emboli, blood clots, small blood clots. And to prevent that, you need to anticoagulate them. There's two choices. The first one is warfarin, and the second choice is aspirin. Uh, warfarin uh, you would give if the person is definitely uh, at risk of a thromboembolism. Uh, aspirin you can give. Uh, if the patient doesn't have that many risk factors for thromboembolism. And uh, aspirin is easier because it doesn't need to be monitored. With warfarin, as most of you know, you need to monitor the INR. So that's just a little presentation about atrial fibrillation.